time, uh, it was quite um, interesting for me why you um, uh, you are working and uh, worked in um, electronic um, uh, synthesizer band, but you choose guitar because guitar was fashionable, or no? Because guitar was my instrument. My guitar was my first instrument. I uh, I I learned. I was trained in, in classic guitar for many years when I was a child, for six, seven years. And I played Bach and Mozart and, and all the classics, Caroli, so and these oh. classic guitar pieces. You liked it or you hated it? I liked it, yes. I, I done it because I liked it. I had a very good teacher. He, she taught me, but she was a very profound teacher. She. she uh, I had a, I, I, I had a heritage from my, my grandfather. He had a very small little guitar, and when I was a very little child, I liked it a little bit. And then we had a piano in our uh, apartment where I grew up, but I was not allowed to play it. And then later in school, somebody came from the local music school here in Berlin and said, well, if uh, yeah, what do you want to learn it and we offer course you go there every once a week one day in a week so I said yeah okay I try it and my parents liked it and so I went there but it was completely easy and I didn't have any intention to become professional or so it was just for fun and uh, it was quite relaxing because I had a good teacher uh, who, who was teaching me very very slowly uh, she was also a teacher for <coughs> um, not only guitar but for Laute. I don't know the English word for it. Lau uh, uh, Lute? Luten, yes, yeah. And this is even more, you have to learn it very slowly, very short. So she was teaching me just with. I started one string, so I had to play one string for, for, for four weeks, six weeks, only on one string. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so yeah. <laughs> it was no stress. I was not in a hurry, so I went there every week and I played boom, boom. And she said, "Yes, this was good, and it, it has to be balanced all the time. The same, the same attack, and the same, just to have it precisely in the same way to get a rhythm." Okay. So, and after six weeks, I was allowed to to take the next string. So, so I had two strings. Ah, so. <laughs> and then after six months or so. <laughs> I finally was able to play all straight. <laughs> <laughs> so when they talk, tell him that a um, uh, source of your minimalism is uh, Philip Glass or something like that, it's it's not true. This is uh, <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> the yeah. basis of my your early minimalism. influence. Yes, yeah, it was really good. But I mean, I really learned it very, very profound. This is a very good teaching, and so. So others they start with a chord and then bum bum and then this chord this chord and they want to sing and they want to to play a song and so I said no 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 you have to learn note by note very slowly and so oh. so it took three four years and then I like to play these um, kind of uh, pieces for exercising etude uh, like very simply very simple things to to train your fingers. I liked it to play because I was able, I was starting to improvise because you can change, you can play this way, this way, Just it's just for exercising, it's not a fixed composition, it's it's a piece, open, open piece, and that's maybe why I like to, how I, how I learned about improvising that I liked it. And it was only after four years or five years training that she gave me the first real Compositions to play for from from uh, I don't remember from from Spanish composers or so, and then I started to think about this, and there were uh, some parts I liked in the composition, some parts I didn't like, and so I started to think about this was maybe the beginning where I started to learn to to think about my own composition, <laughs> because there were I, I found this is a I had I had a good piece of guitar and I played half of it and I liked it and then there was another part that I didn't like it. so why should I learn it I don't like it <laughs> <laughs> so that was the origin maybe when I started to compose in my head so so that I 
I played what I liked, so uh, what, what I felt uh, is, is a nice sound and what I liked, yeah. So. Okay, um, uh, you released this album, the, the latest um, live album from Australia. Uh, it was some philharmonic or what was the hall? What was the uh, venue? This was uh, Melbourne Art Center Melbourne. It's a huge complex with various uh, places, big, big uh, theater for opera, for, for big theater. Uh, and it was a three-day festival. It's the biggest place in Melbourne. I think it's even bigger than Sydney Opera. And Melbourne is a very uh, renowned place, more renowned place for cultural events in Australia than, for example, Sydney. Uh, also, not only music, but also for art and for, for films. Uh, and uh, the Uh, this was a festival for about three days, three or four days, called Super Sense Festival. And uh, the woman who was the uh, curator of the of this festival, Sophia Bruce, was her name. She was in English. Uh, she knew my music, and she invited me for a solo concert. Uh, so she liked the music and um, uh, she proposed not to play uh, to play not only a, um, a solo concert but also to play maybe some session or some workshop with with other musicians who also participate in in the festival and uh, so but I didn't like But I didn't like that much uh, sessions or playing around, so... Why? Um, yeah, sometimes it's nice, but it's not for public. Uh, it's, uh, so it's, uh, sometimes it's nice, but not... I, I, I prefer a kind of concept for it, yeah, so... And uh, so I thought about it, and then my wife, Ilona, came up with the idea to play some old Ashra Temple stuff because uh, uh, Sophia, she proposed musicians like Ariel Pink. Uh, he's a singer, and, uh, he's a very, very well known and uh, prominent uh, singer, songwriter from, from not maybe not a songwriter, but musician, singer from Los Angeles. And uh, so actually he's a singer so I thought about maybe some pieces where there are lyrics uh, because I in the history of in my history there's not that I didn't I didn't use very many uh, pieces I didn't play many music pieces with with lyrics so uh, uh, there's there were two two albums in the early 1970s, Ashra Temple albums, the second one and the third one. The third. And so I thought, well, maybe these pieces. So she proposed Ariel, uh, Ariel Pink, then another mu musician from Australia, Shex Chamberlain, who, is, uh, who played with Ariel Pink, who played synthesizer, uh, but also bass and guitars and other instruments. And finally she came up with Oren Barchi also an Australian musician, a really good musician, who is uh, uh, an experimental guitar player, but he also plays drums, he played with KG Haino, with very experimental stuff, he plays solo concerts with experimental guitars, with many, many musicians. But actually I didn't know any of the three, and uh, yeah, so... Uh, Said, okay, let's try. We play some old, maybe some pieces from the album Schwingung, some pieces from Seven Up. And I was in contact with the three musicians by email, and then I found out that, uh, yeah, they knew the music, they liked the music, and uh, so I was really a bit shocked and surprised. I thought, woof, they are many, many years younger. 
and they said, no, we are familiar with the music, we don't need any score, we don't, you don't have to tell us anything, we know the music, we know that I wanted to give them the lyrics, no, we need it, we don't need it, we know everything. <laughs> and so we met just, uh, yeah, so we agreed to play, so I played actually two concerts in, in, at the festival in Melbourne, one solo concert, and then one that I called uh, Ashra Temple Experience because it's not the original Ashra Temple, but it's yeah a kind of experience uh, performing these pieces with young musicians who were not born when when I actually made this music in the uh, yeah, original recording, and we had a rehearsal for one day before. It was great, and um, so we went on stage, played. We had a great recording, multi-track recording, and uh, so I took the files, and then I asked my old friend and producer uh, Mick Lossop from England, a famous producer for many years for Van Morrison, for example. I knew him from the album Correlations in 1979, uh, which we made together. He was the engineer and co-producer. Uh, yes, yeah, so I asked Mick Lossop uh, uh, if he would like to mix it. Actually, Mick Lossop was a little bit uh, participating in this because he was he met this woman, Sophia Bruce, from Australia before, and uh, they were talking about maybe inviting me. So I also I, I, I thought of inviting uh, Mick Glossop actually for the concert to, to record it and to mix it live, but there was no time, and so I thought, okay, that we do maybe he can do the mix for the for the vinyl and for the CD. Release, so he did, and so we have a yeah very good mix by Mick Lossop, and it's an original yeah document. It's a recording. It's nothing. It's all in it. It's about sixty minutes. We play two pieces, three pieces from the album Schwingung. We play the title track Schwingung. I asked for a vibraphone on stage, an old-fashioned vibraphone. Where we played all the four at the vibraphone. It was a funny thing. And, uh, and we played a kind of medley from the Seven Up album, the first part where Timothy Leary was making the lyrics and where he was also singing. And it's really crazy. It sounds, in parts, it sounds like if it would be the original. I've so. heard that. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard the original. And uh, who was so uh, e eager to print the, the record and put it on the market? Uh, we did. This is our own uh, release. We, I it's, have, it's your own label? Uh, yes, so I have, we have our own label, MG Art. It's our label for 16, 17 years, no more, than, yeah, 17 years, since 2000. And I release all my albums uh, on this label. So uh, we have uh, we have a good distribution company uh, worldwide. There's a company in, in in Germany and with connections to all over the world. What was the first print? How many? How many records you printed in vinyl? First run. 
you mean the the this one? The, the yeah, yeah, yeah. One? This album was uh, in vinyl. I think two thousand or something. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, this is now. They are, they are specialized. This this distribution company is very good in vinyl uh, distribution. We have re-released E2E4 some last year, and we sold more than ten thousand copies immediately from this uh, E2E4. So, well, I think it's okay. We made both. We made vinyl and CD. CD and the uh, Apple Store. So many people. Apple Store, iTunes, no. No, we don't have it now. I'm not so really happy with with uh, digital uh, distribution because why? Uh, you are digital. You are electronic. Yes, but it it doesn't bring anything. It's you get you get. Uh, I get from. I have some some of the albums are illegally digitally distributed, but I get some some. Uh, uh, composers uh, shares from yeah. from the German Composer Society yeah. GEMA, so you have tons of papers, hundreds of papers, and in the end, it's uh, three euro fifty five or so. <laughs> <laughs> depends so, one ter on one part. It depends on the music, of course. If you have very quiet pieces, very yeah, it's 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 better if it's more a quiet place and people are sitting. Uh, but sometimes it's it's just fun when people start to dance. So I have both. I have I have played uh, concerts in in uh, in places where there were seats, and in the middle of the concert, people were standing up and dancing between the rows. And uh, I had a concert in Copenhagen, for example. There were people jumping on stage and started to dance. <laughs> Ah, that was great. But, uh, somehow I like it uh, when it when it happens like this. Uh, it depends. For example, a piece like this piece E two E four is you can play it in different locations. You can play it. Uh, uh, oh, I played it open air at huge festivals where people standing in front. Uh, moving like this, not really dancing, but move in Japan, for example. I was playing it here in Berlin at a, at a big club, legendary or famous club, Berghain. Of course, people were dancing uh, to it as well. Uh, but I also played it just recently in London at the Barbican Center. Uh, this is a seated place, people were sitting there. I played it at the Tonhalle right now, people were sitting there. Uh, it's it's different every time. Um, what about um, copyrights? Um, if uh, you use, uh, uh, should should you ask uh, Klaus Schulze to 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 play the Asher Temple tunes or not? When you playing? No. No. He has nothing to do with it. Aha! Uh -huh. It's it's post Schulze. This is this is uh, I, we don't play it. So the the second album Schwingung is completely Schulze was not with 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 Ashra Temple for long. Second album is without Schulze. The third album is without Schulze. All the others they are solo albums, and uh, so these are all my compositions. So I have no nothing to do with him. <laughs> so. So every everything you you you're doing by yourself, uh, you don't owe nobody nothing. No, this is uh, the I I would owe uh, one part is um, the lyrics for for uh, for the Seven Up album. They are by Timothy Leary, uh, so I have to credit Timothy Leary when when we play this so when we perform it. Uh, but none of the rest, the other compositions, they were shared, we shared, I shared with my old friend Hartmut Enke, my partner, but he died 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Um, so, uh, not everything, but the majority of, of the pieces is just, uh, yeah. that's no, I don't have to ask anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have um, the time to be interested in other people's music? Uh, yeah, 
Yes, I, but uh, I, I, I don't listen very much to music. I, I listen only when, when I have some, some reason <laughs> that uh, somebody, a friend, gives me some music and, and tells me I should listen to it. But I don't listen to, to radio or I don't listen to TV or it doesn't attract me so much. And, uh, most of the time I, I I work on my music and that's okay and so I have enough to do <laughs> to, to I have enough ideas to to work to 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 make my music even better to work on it and to make it more precise to make it different I have enough ideas so I I have enough inspiration I don't need any more. <laughs> Which is not that I'm against it, but uh, in the last years, I followed music from. I mean, I, I really liked to listen a lot to music in the 1960s when I was a teenager, of course. And but it was a little. But over the years, it got less and less. It was a little bit less. Uh, I was already active in music, playing myself, so I, I was more choosing what would be interesting for me or what would be an inspiration. I like very much African music. I listen to uh, South American music. I listen to uh, Caribbean music. Uh, uh, I liked, uh, uh, yeah, of course, minimal music and, and all this, from all these parts, I, I created my own style. But sometimes I hear something that I like. Ah, yeah. Uh, there's a good radio program here in Berlin from an old friend of mine. He's uh, uh, he's making this uh, electronic radio program two hours every week, and he's doing it now for um, more 25 or even longer. And. Uh, he invites me quite often to his program to make interviews and to to play my new uh, albums. It's uh, uh, Olaf Zimmermann. It's his name. He's working in the RBB uh, called uh, Electro Beats. Very nice program. In terms of electronic music, there's too much. Music is going in a direction very. Yeah, for me it's it's a bit too much in the only dance music because I, I mean I like dance music that's not the problem but uh, I like more the experimental side of new uh, style or development in music. It's not only electronic music. I, I always compare it to the to the 1970s when there was the minimal music was really influential. Um, this was really a whole movement, and uh, well, there are many different music has many, many different aspects, many different directions, but there's not really a, a new, bigger movement that you can, uh, what, what, what would be yes, influent, in, influencing um, people, other musicians. Um, so we can wait. There's much to do with electronic uh, stuff. We have still space for experiments, or everything is done. No, I think there's a lot of space for for experiments, but it's uh, it's difficult because it, it's uh, on the one hand it's very easy. You you buy an instrument, you buy a keyboard, and you buy uh, a thousand sounds or a million sounds you get for free. And then you sit there and switch all the sounds and say, well, maybe this, maybe this, and then you do play a little bit, and then you think you are Beethoven or Mozart. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> this is not like this. Uh, that's what I told you told before about my, my, my great uh, guitar teacher, that you need a profound uh, idea about what is music, what is music all about, and how to create it. And the original idea is that you take just a few elements, maybe three, four, five notes or something like this, as an example, but then you try to make a big symphony out of these five notes. And that's minimalism, and that does not mean there's not much happening, but 
and many and many many young people don't understand it. They think it's enough if they have a little drums and a little bass, and uh, <laughs> it's minimal music. <laughs> this is not true. So I always explain that to young people. I did some some lectures or lessons. Uh, I met uh, students now from the New York University. Uh, here in Berlin, I had uh, I had some kind of lesson uh, lecture, and I was in I was in Stockholm. I had a kind of lecture talking about my music and some uh, some kind of talk with with audience an hour before for one hour, and then I tried to explain it, the ideas of the music uh, and how to what's the difference of minimalism, what's the idea about it, and what's my interpretation of it, and how I came to it when playing it. Um. What brings more more finances, uh, gigs or um, <coughs> records, now, in Germany or in, in your case? Um, I think at the moment it's getting back to concerts. It was, uh, I mean, I started with concerts. Uh, for me, music was always something, a live event, and I never thought very much of recording it or of records releasing or so. so. Uh, I mean, I was quite lucky that when we did our first uh, contract, first recording, first release, but I wanted to keep it as much as possible as a live concert event, like in the way we played, and I didn't want it to make it too much uh, a kind of record studio production. I, uh, because, uh, yeah, I like the idea of live. Uh <laughs> It's still interesting to produce or to to release records now. Vinyls again, since many years, vinyl is very popular again. You have the big, beautiful covers. Uh, it's really a collector's item if you have vinyls. Even smell. You have the smell, yeah. <laughs> and the sound is unique. It's if you yeah, if you like it, uh, or maybe you just put it in the put it aside and keep it. Uh, it's, it depends on the type of music. If it's, uh, if it's music that you will hear very often in the radio, if it's, if it's popular or contemporary music, which you hear every day, 
uh, there's no need to buy it, there's no need to collect it somehow. And so, but if it's music with something, some special music which is different, you won't hear it since to collect it. And, uh, so we should uh, we should listen uh, your new album from vinyl. Yes, you should listen from vinyl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, the photos. A lot of work. Huh? This is the rehearsal from the first day. This is Ariel Pink, this is Shex, this is Oren. Oren on drums, Ariel on bass, Shex on keys. This is me. 